All right, get out and vote. Those are the four words you hear in every campaign season. TMJ Force chief political reporter Charles Benson is here with a political panel. We're excited about this. Signs are already pointing to a higher than normal midterm election. So what's driving voters interest? Well, let's talk with Democratic strategist and former communications director for Governor Tony Evers, Melissa Baldoff, and longtime Waukesha County Republican activist Robin Moore. Thanks for thanks uh, both of you for being here. I know both of you have been involved in voter turnout. So take a look at these numbers right now. 3.5 million people in Wisconsin are registered to vote in November. That's higher than the 2018 midterm election, but not quite as high as the presidential numbers in 2016 and 2020. So Melissa, I'll start with you. What's driving voter registration right now? And will it translate to higher voter turnout? Uh, I think that what's driving voter registration right now is we're seeing a lot of young people that are getting ready to vote. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of women who are very fired up. They are very concerned about the attacks on women's rights that we are seeing from people like Senator Ron Johnson and from somebody like Tim Michaels running for governor as a very radical out of state extremist. So I think that's really driving a lot of interest uh, for people to make sure that they get out and vote this year because they know there's so much at stake. So do you think it will translate to a higher voter turnout? I, I do. I think that there are a lot of efforts going on, and I think that the communication is happening uh, to voters right now to let them know what, what's on the line and what's at stake for them uh, well, in this year's election. Uh, Robin, 2018 and 2020 were not good years for Republicans in statewide races. So what are you seeing or hearing about the higher voter registration and what will it mean for the governor or U.S. Senate races? Well, like you said, in 2016, we saw a high number of new voter registrations, and those were people voting for the very first time. Those people are still voting and we're seeing a lot more first time voters as well because they are tired of paying Biden inflation numbers at the gas pump, at the stores for their health care. Um, they're tired of the crime that we're seeing across Wisconsin. That's going to translate very well for Senator Ron Johnson and for our gubernatorial candidate Tim Michaels because these candidates represent what the people want. We want to see economic prosperity and we want safe communities, and the other side just doesn't have that down. So Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Milwaukee on Thursday during Hispanic Heritage Month and meet with Latino leaders. Census numbers show the Hispanic Latino community increasing in Milwaukee by about 8% in 2020 as the city's overall population fell. So Melissa, I'll begin with you. What does the VP's visit, uh, what message does she send by coming here, and how are Democrats trying to attract this growing Vote, voter block. Sure. Uh, you know, I think that Wisconsin is always going to be a battleground state. It's always going to be important. And we're going to have a lot of interest from uh, high profile folks like like the president, like the vice president, who are going to come into our state and want to have those communications. I think that right now we are seeing some really great wins that uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris uh, have, have been able to get through when it comes to the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is a historic investment in climate, uh, when we're seeing things like the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that are going to create, you know, thousands of new jobs in Wisconsin. So there's a lot to be excited about, and there's a lot on the line. Again, uh, we need to make sure that we send Mandela Barnes to be the 51st Democrat in the Senate to really protect our, our priorities, uh, and we need to make sure that uh, we reelect Governor Evers and give our federal partners a strong partner here in the state with the governor. All right, let me jump in there. Robin, the president and vice president have made Milwaukee a high-profile place to visit. Republicans don't have that star power of being in the White House right now. So how will Republicans Republicans counter this and try to win over this key voting block in November. Well, we're already seeing a trend, Charles, of Hispanic voters coming to the Republican side just for the reasons, like I mentioned earlier, high inflation. And, you know, these um, his, the largely the Hispanic community has come to this country to get away from oppression and crime, and they want to feel safe and have their shot at the American dream. Republicans represent that opportunity the best because we're not out there asking to, for the, the uh, police to be defended, defunded in our communities. We're out there speaking a message of prosperity prosperity and opportunity. And so the Hispanic community is realizing this. The numbers are trending toward uh, Republicans. And um, Tim Michaels has been in the Hispanic community. We've got uh, Ron Johnson as well, who's been out there. And 
they're going to be excited about candidates who want to give them what they're looking for, safety and prosperity. And finally, do you think that will translate to a higher voter turnout for a midterm, maybe even getting closer to presidential numbers, Robin? Absolutely, because these are hitting people in the pocketbooks today, and come November, it's going to be even worse. All right, we'll leave it at that. We thank you both for being here, Melissa Baldoff and Robin Moore. We appreciate you talking to us and taking time to talk about it this afternoon. As we know, this is going to be a close election, and this is one of the reasons why both sides are fired up for it. Yeah, I, you know, I was at the hair salon this afternoon and the folks next to me were talking about, you know, the race and mm -hmm. the commercials were on TV. They were tired, though, of the political oh, ads, think, yeah. but they were saying in the end, yeah. if you do your homework, you yep. can make the right decision for yourself. Yeah, that's right. And there's going to be a lot more ads between now and November 8th. <laughs> know, Get ready, good. Charles. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we're also getting a couple more looks at the race for Senate between Ron Johnson and Mandela Bars. We got two new polls today. First, Emerson College has Ron Johnson in the lead, 48 percent, with Mandela Barnes four points behind, six percent undecided. Other side of that coin is from Siena College. It has Barnes up 48 to Johnson 47. Again, stay tuned. This one will not be over until it's over. Yeah, and in case you are still unsure of who to cast your vote for in the race for U.S. Senate, this is a big race. Be sure to join your moderators, Charles Benson and Shannon Sims, on Thursday, October 13th. We will be hosting a live debate with Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson.